Hiya, this is another car boot bargain, I think, anyway. It's the Philips Philly Corder. These were made in Holland. Uh, I think they started in the early 60s and they were lots of valves and or tubes as you call them. Uh, there were several models made. Some of them had two sets of keys. Uh, some of the later ones had slider controls instead of the knobs on them. Uh, they were about 1972-ish. I'm unsure as to which one this is. Even JC Penny had a version made in 1968 and I think they called it the Pennant. But anyway, I'm going to open it up. The reason I'm going to open it up is that the reverb does not work. There's a spring reverb in here. Um, when it's been on for about 20 minutes, suddenly the spring reverb works and it gives quite a nice sound. So I'm going to get inside, we'll have a look what's in there, and I'll try and get that reverb to work. At the same time, we'll find out if it's transistor or valve or whatever. Anyway, screwdriver time. I've just realised there's all these connections in the back. Oh, sorry, underneath because this is where the legs go, uh, for output, that looks like a record deck symbol. The five pinned in, some of them, there's a volume control up there if you want to put a, a pedal into this thing. And then moving up, there's a big red switch there, God knows what that's for. I haven't got a clue, maybe that's the on off switch when it's on its stand, but then it's got an on off switch on the front. There's the voltage selector over here, I'll just unscrew that. Uh, that's got the fuses in and this is what you would pull out and push back in again That'll have little pins on it and that'll set different windings on the transformer So you can use it practically anywhere in the world There's the keying matrix. I believe that's what you call it And it pushes each key pushes several little springy bits of metal against bus bars and that is how these babies work right that took a lot of work to get into this thing there's some of the screws holds the chassis onto the bottom board some of the screws holds the wood on and you just don't know what's what uh, but anyway I'm in here now and it looks quite a simple circuit don't know what's happening here this obviously is the transistor version there's loads and loads of uh, what we've we got BF 195s they're NPN transistors 195s 19 yeah all BF 195s just tons and tons of them and some nice crusty old capacitors hmm very nice now the bit I want to get to is underneath this board, which is the spring reverb. Right, two screws in the back here, and then two screws there, and this whole board just hinges, just check the wires, yeah, just hinges up. Will it stop? Yes, look at that, beautiful. This was made to be worked on. And this is the spring reverb. And the whole spring reverb is balanced on springs as well. I did notice when you move it around that something was clunking around inside. You see that? It's suspended on springs. So I'm trying to figure out what, what's going off here. The power supply here looks well used. Some of the resistors have been cooking for a long time. They're actually burning the board underneath. But it still works, it's still running. Here's a little clever device. This here is a resistor, but it's, I'm not sure, I've seen something like this before where it's soldered onto two pieces of metal that are spring loaded. So if it gets really, really, really hot, it actually unsolders itself and the spring pulls it apart so it disconnects it. It's like a little safety device. Ah! 
This is a valve version. There you go. There's one of the valves inside there. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. It looks actually quite clean in here, considering it's what, 40, 40 years? Yeah, 40 years old, I reckon, at least. But the, the problem is, because there's no microchips, I'm finding it difficult to date it. There's no date stamped anywhere. But it's the transistor version, so it's late 60s, definitely. But if anybody out there knows any better, by looking at this and can tell me the year of it, please leave it in the comments, let me know. I'd love to know, because I know there's a lot of people out there who've still got these keyboards. I'm just going to switch it on, and we'll see just how hot those uh, resistors actually get inside there, with one of these FLIR cameras. It's been on for a minute, and now the reverb has just kicked in. But why it takes so long before it gets started, I really don't know. Anyway, pop that down a moment, and let's just check this reverbio. Can you hear that beautiful reverb? So that tells me there's nothing wrong with the reverb, it's just it's just taking a while for some component to warm up uh, before that becomes activated. What happens with the reverb is, in one end you have uh, the springs attached to an electromagnet and a signal is fed into that electromagnet. Now that resonates the spring, the wave travels down the spring to another electromagnet at the other end. That works a bit like the microphone. And then the signal from that comes back and that's mixed in with the sound. So it gives that large room sound. So you have a note going in and that little bit of echo is what's left in that spring after it finished resonating. And that all adds to the feeling that you're in a much larger space. So is it worth fixing? Because it's working. I just wonder why it takes so long to get going, that's all. Is there anything I can repair on this? Yes, this key is low here. Now, the reason this key is lower, just there, the G, is if we look on the back, there's some little pins that stick up and capture the key and snap them into place. So if I push this down, hopefully without breaking it, there you go, just pops into place. And that now is level again. That was an easy fix, wasn't it? Just make sure. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, somebody's even cleaned these buttons up because there's there's no scratchiness going off. I'm quite surprised for something that's so old. Obviously, somebody else has been in here before me and looked after it and serviced it well. I think I'll just put it all back together. It works. It works. People can live with that. The reverb just takes two minutes to kick in. So I'm actually going to just start screwing the thing back together and then find a buyer or it'll probably end up on eBay because I'm trying to get rid of a, a lot of old vintage gear that I've got stashed around the place. So, <laughs> yeah. So, stop it! Now, am I right or am I wrong? Didn't Joe Meat invent the reverb, the plate reverb at that? 
I mean, if anyone can correct me on that, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but I'm sure I saw a documentary on television that he invented all sorts of crazy things. Plate reverb and all the bits and pieces. Uh, now Jason knows a lot about these old keyboards. What's the connection with these and the Vox Continentals? Well, they were a very similar sound actually. The Vox was a drawbar organ though and a bit more expensive and they were made in Italy around the 60s. And groups like the Doors used to use those, you know, on typical like My Fire and that kind of thing. But um, if you couldn't quite afford a Vox Continental or a Hammond organ or a Mellotron, unless like you were the Beatles, you know, uh, you, you would have something like this. And they were small and light to gig with and they had that sort of reedy, sort of transistorised 60s organ sound. Right. A bit more of your knowledge. Which princess had a Mellotron? It was believed to be um, <laughs> Princess Margaret. And, and the, the funny story goes, I don't know how true this is, that that was one of the reasons um, her and Lord Snowden split up. Because <laughs> <laughs> she, when they'd have one of their rows, and, uh, she, would, um, she would start playing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Spitefully, <laughs> but I don't know how true that is. Excellent. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> uh, there's another bit of royal um, um, information, and the one I found in an old keyboard magazine that the again the um, Krumar oh, yes. organ company, which were also Ita Italian, presented um, Charles and Diana on their wedding with one of uh, with a Krumar organ. Really. That was a bit cruel, wasn't it? <laughs> well, even crueler than that, they wanted to have it sprayed a kind of an olive green to match the decor. <laughs> oh. Actually, the crewmars were pretty good, weren't they? Oh, yes. Well, I mean, they've somebody's bought the name of the company now and they're making sort of like Hammond organ type clones again. Oh, right. Yep, yes, doing quite well, so I believe. Um, there's some good organs coming out, and I mean it's nearly all keyboards now. But there's some firms, you know, small firms, starting making organs again now, which is nice. 